Hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody raise a hallelujah. hallelujah. In the presence of our enemy. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, Pastor had a sneak peek of what the Lord instructed me to do tonight. But before we do that, I know because of the limited time and because of the whole new norm, I just want to bring us, um, and if I could ask Minister Derek to stay with me because Pastor get a sneak peek, praise God, because I will try to just run through this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about Jesus. And I'm not going to allow, yes, let's play, let's cry, let's play softly. Don't, or you could just stay, don't play yet. You could just stay right here. Yeah. And uh, I was going to say something, yeah. Nothing is going to stop us from praising God. Indeed, the enemy will like to use circumstances, to use situation, to use, you know, what is happening around us to curtail and to hinder and to block us from really reaching out to God and worshiping God the way we need to worship him. But we must not allow anything to hinder us. Are you hearing me tonight? And before we go, you don't have to turn to it. Psalms 118 says, I'm, I'm going to have my iPod, oh, praise God, I'm not. <laughs> oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Amen. I'm going to be dealing with those two words while I am ministering. The Lord is good, Amen. and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. I want to preach a, uh, something that the Lord put in me. It may sound strange, but this is what God gave me. And, I've, and you will learn whatsoever God give you, preach it. And maybe for Donna's sake, I entitle it <laughs> Coronavirus. <laughs> Remembering to give thanks. Coronavirus, remembering to give thanks. This is what the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart. And I asked the Lord, what are you already saying? You know, because of time, I would just maybe just go mention, juggle it. Throughout the scripture, throughout the history of time, through the fall of man, we see many, many events we see many things happen in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and we saw many things happen even in our 21st century as we live. And it, for some reason, when I look over the galaxy of time, whether it's past, present, or future, there is something man always struggle with or, 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 or you know, being challenged with. And it's the spirit to remember. We always forget what God has done for us. And we, we, we struggle to remember when things are tough, when things are bad, when things look like it's, it's going to be all over. Everybody wants the hand of God in the equation. Everybody, whether, you know, the people that are out there, the false God or whatsoever, but when there is problem, when there is circumstances and situation, everybody wants God to shop on their behalf. But it comes a time when God comes true for us and we come out of our predicament and we come out from whatsoever we have been going through or the suffering or the problem or the difficulties, we tend to forget. And I remember, I'm just going to, um, in passing, when God delivered the children of Israel 
The children of Israel went through their time of struggle. I, I should use this word. The children of Israel went through this season of being current quarantine. Hello. For 400 years. And when God delivered them, God told them, when you come out and I'm paraphrasing and you drink and eat and get fat, remember who has brought you out from this bondage. Remember. Hallelujah. And remember because what? God is good and his mercy endured forever. I will not emphasize the definition of good. You know good is good. As long as God is good, he is good. Hello. We cannot be that God is a good, good God. We know mercy, one of the definitions for mercy means something that we don't deserve. God always show us or give us not what we deserve, but something that we don't deserve. And even when Israel was in their quarantine, in their time of difficulty and bondage, in their time of coronavirus, hallelujah, when they came out, Minister Richard, glory to God, the Word of God tells us, I think it's in Exodus 15, 20, that Miriam took a timbrel. The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. I, 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 you know, pastor got to help me because I'm not like pastor and sister Jenny. I got to try to condense this, amen? Because I'm ex I'm a, I like to just go on. Some little rabbit going to jump. <laughs> Glory to God. But the scripture said, Miriam, because, you see, you got to appreciate, hallelujah, where you were and where God, has, uh, where God has brought you from and where you are now. And a lot of times we're not appreciative. We easily forget, hallelujah, but the Lord is good, hallelujah, and his mercy Endure it forever. Somebody said coronavirus. Remember to give thanks. Let me jump into this. A global, a global pandemic has came upon the earth suddenly. Stay with me. The Lord wants to remind you because a lot of us forget. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This global pandemic that came upon the earth suddenly, hallelujah, it affected both the just and the unjust. Come on, somebody. I remember when this pandemic came, none of us was prepared. None of us expected this. We all came happy New Year's morning, shouting and celebrating, not knowing about one month and a half that the entire world, come on somebody, the entire world would have plunged into a time, hallelujah, of people losing their lives. Hello? Hello? Some people that lost their life, some of them, you know them, some of them, I know them. I've lost a great bishop friend of mine. Can I them know? I preach in his church a couple of times. I mean, it was, I mean, it was chilling when I heard he died, young, still in his prime, have a powerful ministry there. And he was, just a couple of days, he was preaching the word of God via the internet, and all the kind of stuff that we are doing. And then suddenly we get a call that Bishop is in the hospital. And then a couple of days after he died. So this global pandemic that came upon the earth suddenly. That, that, that affect both the just and the unjust. Meaning the saved and the unsaved. Hello. 
Glory to God. But God is good because his mercy, hallelujah, endured what? Forever. Somebody give God a, a praise. Hallelujah. And in the results of that, we saw the loss of lives. We saw the loss of jobs. I'm rushing because of the new norm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I feel to preach tonight. Hallelujah. So we lost, the, we lost lives, lost of jobs. Hello. Lost of businesses. Glory to God. Even the just, even those that believe God and know God. And you, and we got to learn to be honest. Some of us went into the state or, 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 or we, we, some of us, we fall into that place of panic. Hello. For the world, the world become hopeless. Are you hearing me? The world become troubled. Glory to God. Some of the people who rich and have great position, there were no match for this coronavirus. It silenced the rich. It silenced great, hallelujah, nuclear power nation. Are you hearing me? Everybody became scared, worried, about their job, about their loved one, about their business, about their investment. Oh, you sitting there like you wasn't worried. That's the truth. A lot of us did not see any stopping in sight how this thing was operating and, 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 and moving. It seems like when this thing is going to be over because it came so suddenly and it began to move so fast. Nations begin to panic. Government begin to panic. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. Christians themselves become even hopeless. Not all. Because in passing, this pandemic, it did good for some, bad for others. Some get saved. Some get worse. Hello? Glory to God. Come on, that's the truth. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, you, 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 you live in this one, you, you, have to, you have to take a view of things, or to say a, a test of things, or a pulse of things, and see what is happening in, in, in our world. That's why I always say that miracles and disasters... Always don't bring men to God or cause a rush of people coming to know Jesus Christ. Because in this pandemic, in this coronavirus that overtake the earth suddenly, some people are blaming God. Hello. Even some Christians are blaming God. So, as I said, it worked for some. Some get close to God. Some hate God. Some say, why God allowed this to happen? Hello. But God is good. And his mercy endure it forever. So we saw where it seems like in a moment that even government, nation that have the hang of things that know how to maneuver and make things happen, they, 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 they as, as in our local talk, they caught with their jeans down. <laughs> Glory to God. They look like those swag young fellas with their pants down and they're walking the street. Praise God. Hello. And we did not know when the end of this thing Will, hap will, will, will come to an end. I just want to rush through it because of time, because of what I want us to do. Because God wants to remind us. Cities and towns became like a ghost town. 
let's, let's, let's go back because you see, you could only appreciate what you have now when you, rem when you look back of what you just came out of. You see, some of us become complacent. I make up, you see, I'm not going to allow myself to forget because God is still depending on the church. I want to go ahead before my time. The church is still the answer in the earth. Jesus Christ is still the hope for the world. Jesus Christ is still the hope for all these things that are happening right now. Coronavirus, nation shutting down, new norm, mass on our face. Jesus Christ is still Lord. My God, you're not hearing me. And the church is still relevant today. We cannot allow the enemy, hallelujah, to, to make us feel that, that we, we, we are not relevant anymore. And, 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 cl and our voice being shut down and pushed in a corner. This is the time. This is the hour where the church needs to shine more. Where the church needs to be more forceful. Where the church needs to be more powerful. This is the time that we need, according to Isaiah, to arise and shine. For the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. We are still relevant, church. Let us not allow this pandemic, this coronavirus, my God, to curtail us, to cause us to walk in depression, to lose our praise, to lose our running to our feet to the house of the Lord. My God, I'm coming to that. Don't allow this thing to cause us to stay home and hide away from the house of God. I'm going ahead and before myself. David said in Psalms 28, 6, hallelujah, surely, hallelujah, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and hear what he said I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life I come to realize that the devil hallelujah is trying to use this thing to cause the church to be quiet to cause the church to come in to all kind of excuse that we don't want to come to the house of God the church becomes so fearful of coronavirus my God and we got to understand that greater is he that is in us that needs the word I listen I'm not here I'm I have some wisdom I'm not saying that don't wash your hands and don't sanitize and don't do all the stuff but for God's sake we got to understand that we are still the light of the world we are still the listen nothing could happen in this earth until Jesus take us out of here the church is the preservator the church hallelujah is still the salt of the earth glory to God he's so fearful you know what I discover in my quietness and I repent I said, God, you just get a hard time for us to obey you. The pastor preaching, don't commit sin, don't fornicate, don't commit adultery, don't do this, don't do that. And we still, we don't have no fear for God. We still do all kind of thing. <laughs> Hello. We have no fear for God. And I take a peep into what is happening. And I say, God, look, save and unsave. Look how we are obedient and submissive. Hallelujah. To the, to, 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 and, and understand, it's not, I'm not saying it's bad. Eh? Because you still, the Bible talks about obeying the Lord of land. And if this is what the scientists say we have to do. But I'm just showing you friends. Come on, old this revival. And I'm speaking for those of you that, are, that don't want to come. From tonight, you're going to start coming back to church. Those of you on the internet, praise God. Because the Bible said church is still important. Don't forsake. Oh, God, I got to go here before my time. Look how the world, hallelujah, is rushing back to the bars, rushing back to the job, rushing back to the beach, rushing back to Cora, rushing back. But the church, I ain't coming. Hello. Hello. 
Or you see what, and pastor preached a couple of times. I, I went back in the archive, and, G, and pastor said a thing in his opening the first Sunday, that Jesus, what he has done for us, it is worth it. It is worth it getting off of our blessed assurance, hallelujah, and put on our mask and come in the house of God. We still have a work to do. We still have to preach. We still have to prophesy. We still have to govern. We still have to do the work of the kingdom of God. Hello? The world is so eager to get back to evil. We are running in their feet. Hello? And we are the church. Greater is he. You know, we quote all these big words. I'm a child of God. Greater is he. And we are afraid. You're afraid to come out of your house to come. To, because listen, God has been good to you. God has been good to all of us. His mercy, my God. Hello, somebody. Cities and town became like a ghost town. Hallelujah. Malls. Places that, hallelujah, places of importance or places of excitement became a places, places of hopelessness, bleak, dead. I take a peep into this thing and hear what Matthew says, this is even not the end. And child of God, if this is going to be the church's attitude, behavior, and it's not the end, it's just a virus, yes, but it's killing people, it did a lot of damage. But we still have to understand that we have a God that says, no weapon that formed against us shall prosper. We have a God that says, no evil shall come near our dwelling. I can hear some of you saying, but pastor, a lot of pastors and Christians die. Well, take that up with God. <laughs> Hello. Because if you take a peep into that too, a lot of them then was not wise. Hello. You see, I'm not saying that we must not be wise and follow the guidelines. But God is showing us his goodness. Hello. And God is showing us his mercy. And God began to bring us out. Hello. Glory to God. So therefore, as God began to bring us out, we need to come back to the place of being, our attitude being gratitude to God. Hello. The world is not scared. The world is happy to go back to the bars, to the clubs, to the malls and all the different places. Why are we afraid to come into the house of God? We can come here where there's prayer, where there's worship. My God, and as we begin to glorify God, as we begin to raise God higher in our hallelujah against the doubt and the fear and our unbelief and begin to extol him, my God, I still believe God is still able to deliver us from coronavirus. He, he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not only healing cancer and healing. God can heal anything. We got to learn to trust him. Hello? Even animals and insects, hallelujah, become no, noticeable. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In all the different towns, cities. Imagine animals and insects that was not visible or noticeable around the place because of the absence of people and the, 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 empty, the emptiness of, of towns and cities, Anim animals, <laughs> praise God, <laughs> animals, and you see, you see, 
<laughs> How can you be found in a place of liberty? Glory to God. But it's all right. Became what? Noticeable. You see, a lot of us only concerned, but I, I, I normally take a peep into everything. And when God dropped this in my spirit, I began to see, I said, my God. Because I take a worldview of the news. And many, many towns, New York, you name it, was empty. The, the street was empty. And animals and insects and different things that never, how, how, how say Sister Jenny, never commonly merge with people. Because of how the business of the city and the noise and the, the smoke and all the different things. In those three months, the, even the news began to highlight things that never associate themselves in the developed world begin to come out. Hello? Begin to get some breeders. You see the danger. You see what this thing have done to our world? Hello? Are you hearing me? But the Lord is good and his mercy endured forever. David says in Psalms 27 verse 13, he said, I would have fainted. Hallelujah. Lest I see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I say that to say a lot of us, hallelujah, as children of God, we were about to faint. And I'm coming to some of you. Watch this. Not only towns and cities and animals and insects, but place of worship was abandoned. Hello. Look, hallelujah, hopeless. Even pastors, not all pastors, even pastors became fearful and began to panic. Hello? Because here why, ladies and gentlemen, not our pastor, but I've been looking at this thing in the time where we couldn't go nowhere. And not all pastor was speaking hope, hopefulness and faith because in reality, it looked like we don't know when this thing would have been over. Yeah. I recall, and that is why I am grateful. That is why I'm going to be different. That is why I'm going to preach more powerful. I'm going to pray more powerful. Hello, somebody. I'm going to witness. I'm not going to wait for a crusade or a pulpit. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to share my church. I'm going to tell people about Jesus. Because Jesus says in Matthew 24, he said, when we see all these things, he said, he, he, he said, look up. He said, it's not even the end. So my friends, greater, worse, hear me tonight, church, body of Christ, hear me. Worse is coming. And God has given us a test. This is like a, a trial. And if we can handle, oh God almighty tonight. If we can have the right attitude and the right disposition and understand the B-I-B-L-E, understand what God has saying to the church and we can handle it right. When the worst comes, no wonder Jesus said, I got to shorten the days because the very elect is going to be deceived. Hello, it's the truth. I mean, it's good for us to laugh, but it is serious. Christians are winning away. Why is the church, why is the world finding an opportunity to get back into the evil and get back into it real good, 100%? Even so far, I even want to go down that road, that they're following the, the particular leader, praise God, without a, a face mask. And they're saying it's a hoax, it's a bogus. And they're coming out. Hit me with music. Hello? I hear him. Pastors became hopeless. Churches was abandoned. 
My God, this thing was so serious. I remember the last Friday night when I preached the empty chair. I remember Pastor made a statement. And he said, he was talking to one of the persons. I can't remember, but I recall. And he said, he says, we don't know when. We don't have a clue when we're going to get back to the place of worship. Do you know, that is why I use the scripture where Jesus, where, where, David, where David said, the Lord, oh, give thanks unto the Lord because he is good. Amen. Is the goodness of God have us all here today and the entire world. Amen. God, God releases mercy not only to Trinidad, but around the world because it's lifted. It is better than how it was. Because God didn't finish yet. The worst is yet to come. Imagine God give us an opportunity in this pandemic. As, we, as Pastor dealt with it during the COVID season, we don't know if it's God or we, we don't want to get into that. But God, and Pastor always used that, God always work all things together for his good. So let me say, even if God used and worked this pandemic, this coronavirus, to bring us in a place of a closer walk with him, yeah. hello, a deeper life in him, yeah. hallelujah, where we were faltering, where we were not close to God, where we used to tell God, if you give me more time, hello, and with all the prayer and God maybe allow a situation to arose so that we can come closer to him. Amen. Are you hearing me? Because it's not the end. We still have a Listen, Holiness Revivers still have a vision that God has given, Pastor, so that many lives could be changed and many lives must change. So it's not the end. So don't pack up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. It's time for us to get back on fire. Yes. Hello, somebody. God has given us an opportunity to get closer to him, to pray, to fast, to get more in his word, more family time. Hello, somebody. Not only church was abundant, but family life was, a, was, was affected both in the positive and the negative. Many family lives. Hello. Some wife gained their husband. Some wife lost their husband. Some husband gained their wife. And some wife, hello. You see what this thing has caused in our world? God sent me to tell you to remember so you could give him thanks because he has been good and his mercy endureth forever. Hello? Are you hearing me tonight? Glory to God. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I was saying a lot of us was not seeing any change in sight. Do you know, if it was not for the goodness and the mercy of God, all now we can have still been home? Hello. Oh, God, I hope you get this tonight. I hope you're seeing this thing in the light. It's not your, it's not your favorite charismatic message where you're preaching scriptures and all these things. And I, I'm talking about coronavirus. That is my message. Coronavirus. <laughs> Remember to give thanks. I was saying, Pastor was saying, maybe till August, maybe till September, the church might open back. 
And pastor was always saying in his message, don't allow the shutdown to give the devil an occasion to separate you from God. Log on, stay, listen to the message, pray, fast, do what you got to do to stay connected until it is over. Because everything that starts has an end. Glory to God. The train of Israel was in bondage, but they came out. Hello. And we can go on and on. Every situation that hit the earth, whether it's in the Bible and now, we always came out. Or we always come out. Which one? Which one? Both of them? Good. Sparrow says so. Hello. Many people lost their jobs. Many people lost their business. Some people was almost, God, I want to preach this thing so bad, but I can preach them all over. Don't worry. Glory to God. Because I, I want us to understand the seriousness. You see, we get back a little good, and we, 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 we get back normal. We forget. You remember when a lot of us were frustrated, and we want to be in church, we want things, we, we want back our norm. Hello, because man was not designed and created to be confined and restricted. Hello, somebody. When God created us, he blessed us. He said, be fruitful, be multiplied. He gave us a big, big, big word. Hello, somebody. And a lot of us was frustrated. I see people, listen, people trip. I see video in this pandemic, people was jumping from the roof, taking their lives. People don't know what to do. All kind of madness happened in this pandemic. All kind of sad things. Divorce, separation, my, my, you name it. I was listening last night and I said, wow. Imagine almost 16,000 pregnancy, hallelujah, happened through this pandemic. Glory to God. How come me and my wife didn't get pregnant? Praise Jesus. And we were close like Jesus and I were close. And she didn't get 16,000. Hello, somebody. We forget. God, I feel an anointing here tonight. I feel an anointing here tonight. Hallelujah. David said in Psalms 71, God is good unto Israel, even those of a clean heart. Child of God, God has been good to Israel. Israel was in bondage for 400 years, and God brought them out. But the attitude was different. Every person that God delivered, they remember to give God time. They build an altar. I come out tonight to tell you this Friday night. Let us change our attitude. Let us understand it's not over. And let us get back on fire. Let us get back preaching hard again. Let us get back worshiping. Let us get back singing. Let us get back rejoicing. Let us get back with a passion for God. This is not the hour to come and patricate God anymore. Look at the world. Look at the world, including our children and dad. The little thing lifted, everybody walla walla on themselves. Hello? Prancing up and dancing up and wiling up. Scandalous. And the church we passive. No, but Pastor, I'm not coming until they get a vaccine. <laughs> but which, which God you serve, man? Hello? Well, if, you, well if, if Jesus said the worst is yet to come, before Jesus come, it, listen, I don't know, but it could come a day right here in Trinidad where they start to kill all of us and we can't come to church. You don't know what's going to happen before Christ come. We can become like Bangladesh and become like India and become like Iran. We don't know. This world is changing every day. 
And we're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. And who knows, maybe one of these days, I just, I just preach it. One of these days before Christ come, I might be great and pastor might still in a wheelchair, not preaching. Glory to God sitting there. Hallelujah. And you know, because we use a hundred and something, praise God. I full of gray hair. Glory to God. Hello. But we still taught him to church to come and hear the word of God. <laughs> And they may come in and they may say, those of you, hallelujah, that, 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 that say you're Christian, deny Christ, else you wriggle down this whole place. What will you do then? Christians, we hear good word in this church. Please, let us don't slack our writing. This thing is going to get worse. And I ain't talking about Coronavirus. I'm talking about our Christian walk is going to be challenged. Yes. And the only people is going to make it and overcome is those that are overcome, is those that are solid, rooted, and grounded in Christ. He is just a training place, you know. He is just a preparation place. But that, as long you live godly, as long you're a child, that devil is going to test you. So you better, you better fortify yourself. You better get yourself, hallelujah, with some word inside of you. Listen, every opportunity you get to come into the house of the Lord. Listen, they, we are a force to be reckoned. I hear the Bible say, one will put a thousand, but two shall put what? Ten thousand to fly. <laughs> hallelujah. Listen, my God. We, we, listen, we are, we, 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 are, we are trying to find another scripture, praise God. Two is better than one. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Church, I come to stir us up tonight. I could paint a whole lot of more picture, but I want us, before we go, to lift our hands. Because I remember, let me just drop this in. A lot of you still that are sitting here still working three days a week and two and four days a week. A lot of you still don't know if they're going to call you back fully. Hello? A lot of you may be still back in your rent. My God, Pastor, the next time I'm going to come back to preach, I want to preach and show, show you how God is, how, how, what God do through COVID for some of us that really trust him and believe him. God is a provider. We got to learn to trust him. I remember, my God, when my wife was working good, good, I think I, 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 I told Pastor when he called me and asked me how things, I said, well, you know, they, 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 they give my wife a letter and said, you're temporary, laid off. I said, what do you mean by temporary? I said, oh God, it's just three, this thing just going to be going to pass. What happened to this company? Because you see, when you take your eyes off of Jesus, let me tell you, circumstances, cir listen, li do you know your situation speaks to you? Your problems, your bills, your bad news, it speaks to you. It wants to crush your faith. And when you hear, when you have all these bills and all these overheads, and you hear that you are fired or you are temporarily laid off, that devil could play with your mind. Because you start wondering, how are I going to get this? We are going to get another job, blah, 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 and all kind of stuff. Hello. A lot of pastors was wondering, my God, I wonder if we ever have church again. Or well, when church is going to be open, stand to your feet. Those of you on live stream, wherever you are, stand to your feet and give God praise. I came here with a serious anointing. It's time we fell back this church, man. It's time people get back to the house of God. We cannot allow ourselves to be curtailed and fearful and all the, listen, follow the guideline. Wear your mask, wash your hands, sanitize, but come and give God. The pastor preached, the pastor preached when the, when the church opened. It is worth it. What Jesus has done for us, it is worth it. Come in the church. We got to come out more stronger. We got to preach more stronger. 
We got to seek God for a word more stronger. We got to worship God more stronger. Hello? I like what pastor says. Lift your voice and worship. Shout, praise him. Because when I was going to my God, I was all kind of thoughts, all kind of hopelessness. What going to happen? Oh my God, if you lost your job, you ain't got it. What's going to happen? Oh, church shut down. Everything going to worm. Trinidad, if Trinidad get corona, oh, the whole country mash up economy and on and on and on. Look at some countries. People were so hopeless, they said, I prefer to dead, take their lives. Church, God has been good to Trinidad. God has been good to you. Some of you didn't lost your job. Some of you didn't lost your job. Some of your rent was paid. Some of your bill was paid. Your car loan was paid. My God, you were blessed. You had food. You get so fat in that three months, nothing run out. Hello? Be even fast. Look at me. I couldn't eat. Praise God. I run. No, I changed my diet. I'm trying to eat healthy. I'm looking good, eh? Praise God. Amen. Change my diet. The doctor said, eat things that swim and stay away from things that crawl. Stay away from meat. Eat a lot of fish. And right, Doc? Praise God. A lot of vegetables. I eat, I eat salad like, like a goat now. I eat a whole bowl. I laugh at myself. I eat a whole bowl of bitter crust the other day. It bit in my mouth. I just, you know, I stuffed it down with my mouth. It tastes so good. Better than chicken. Glory to God. Today I had a whole set of cucumbers. Praise God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close it. I'm going to maybe continue this another time when pastor asks me to preach. But this thing is so powerful. Glory to God. Lift your hands. Holy Revival. And let us, Sister Jenny, let us thank God. You know when with this girl, my God, you were so frustrated. You, you're tired of being home. You want to, when this country going to open? Oh, God. Brother Linda, how are you dealing with this thing now? <laughs> Hello? Because it's home church. I mean, home. Listen, we never visit extra supermarket in life. Like it's extra home, extra home, extra supermarket home, extra supermarket home. A couple of nights by Kenneth them. Oh God, me and Kenneth and Hansel and Kian get so close during COVID. COVID finish, we on close. Everybody busy. But tonight, holiness revival, pastor, just for a few, because all of us, we could have still been home today. But God is good and his mercy endureth forever. Somebody lift your hands and begin to thank him, begin to praise him before we go home. Come on, begin to thank him and praise him before we go home. Hallelujah to the Lamb.
to do before pastor come and take over and then sister jenny gonna sing again i want all of you in this place balcony of those of you on live stream i want you to take about a minute i want you to lift your hand in your own way reflect how you felt during covid and how god has brought you out where you are some of you still blessed some of you get blesser and god has done so many great things. and i want you to lift your hands you and him alone and be thankful to him oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good he's been good to us he's been good to us individually as a vision collectively just take just thank him just thank him lift your voice come on lift your voice and thank him hallelujah father we are thankful to you you have seen us through you have brought us out you have brought us over you've been good to us when we didn't know what to do father we come to this house from our different constituency and we say thank you we bless your holy name god lord we will return back to our prayer meeting on tuesdays we return back to our friday night service we return back to our sunday service those on live stream we will step out know that god has already covered us we thank you for what you have done we thank you for how you've kept pastor and all the minister that preach for the three months god an empty chair we thank you how you provided we thank you you protect us eight people have died in this country 120 something get the virus but lord you preserve you preserve 1.4 million people in this country we say thank you we say thank you we say thank you lord we say thank you lord hallelujah come on somebody give god some praise come on give god some praise hallelujah
Hallelujah. More than a conqueror. Not just a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about two things. I'm glad I came to church tonight. And I'm glad that I asked this man to preach tonight. <laughs> I don't think we could have had a better message for tonight. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him thanks. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you richly. You may be seated. 